Hey guys, today we are going to look at the prices right before pre-release because it's always interesting to have a historical record for me at least to see which of these cards went up in price. So leave a comment in the comment description below and I guess whoever picks a card that goes up in price the most as a let's say per dollar because that kind of makes more sense based on this a month a month into release i'll send you some tokens and a postcard not not anything too valuable but nonetheless it would be kind of fun so i will talk about a few cards i really like and a few cards i do not like i do not like the land in the set that it's four dollars land has been reprinted many times and it makes no sense to me why it would be four dollars like yes the artwork is pretty good but you're in standard and it's not like these land have any long-term eternal value so next i do like the one drop pirate i think two dollars is interesting as a price point i don't like any of these foil prices the fact that a foil can a regular card can be 99 cents and a foil can be ten dollars kind of shows you where all the value is on this set all the entire value of this set is in the foils which i don't know that doesn't sound like a great plan to me dragon skull summit at 249 that's kind of better in my opinion deep root champion a lot of these things are very pricey so you have a 99 cent card going for a five dollar foil and then previously you had a 99 cent card going for a ten dollar foil so if I had any suggestion for you is to pick up bulk foils at pre-release. That would be my finance suggestion because it looks like the multiplier is much, much higher. Like Bloodfest, 299 into 10, that's a very big multiplier for something. Even Bishop, 99 cents into $3, that's a pretty big multiplier for a bulk card because the bulk is not really 99 cents, right? It's going to be worth 25 cents maybe a little less um, it is good to trade for foils at pre-release and good to trade away everything else i will talk a little bit about the planeswalkers do i believe dinosaurs will be a deck maybe a tier two deck do i believe pirates will be a deck i don't believe so vampires mm, i'm not entirely sure what's going to appear i'm guessing mardu vehicles would be good but a braid really beats that deck pretty badly and zombies is going to lose a ton red deck wins looks like it gets slightly better not like a whole lot better but slightly the butcher is 7 and 25 foil so again that's a multiplier that you typically don't see that's a 300 plus multiplier frasca 20 bucks is too much for her. She's not worth $20. If anything, this tells me that you should be Chandra. The Chandra that's not rotating out is very, very good compared to these other planeswalkers. Awakening Sun's Avatar, $3 regular, $15 foil. I haven't seen this many big price gaps in it, and it might be because people want these cards for EDH. But it also might be that the value has to go somewhere. And I don't know if the foils are the correct place to have the value in. Uh, mainly because, let's just be honest here. Foils are difficult to sell. They're difficult to move because of conditioning. So a regular card, somebody be like, oh, cool. I'm going to play this in standard. I don't really care if it has like a little bit of whitening. But for foil, that actually matters to a lot of people. Admiral Beckett Bass is 4 and four fifteen 15 as a foil. Axis is 3 and 8, and typically you don't even see that. Like, it's very interesting. The typical percentage you see is 16 and 25, which Carnage Tyrant is. And it's a, the fact that that's one of the priciest cards in the set is kind of disappointing, but at the same time, I'm not all that surprising. The Sun's Avatar is an interesting one. Free colors makes it very difficult to play. Warrior Poet and Jace. So out of Huti, Jace, and Vraska, I don't think Vraska is going to go up. Huti is like too dependent on the dinosaur deck, so maybe one time it goes up, but then it's not going to have longevity. It's two colors, and you need dinosaurs. 
Jace is the interesting one to me. And it might be it might be that he's actually more, he might be more expensive than he appears, which is interesting because at twenty dollars it's like wow, it's really expensive. So the treasure map is three dollars and twelve dollars for <laughs> essentially if you see a flip card and it's foil, you need to trade for that flip card and then hold on to it and then trade it at release or sell it immediately, I guess. So Vraska's Contempt, uh, I mean, the cards are decent, they're just not, so it's very difficult for you to sit, get back your pre-release value from one card, and that's typically not true, and I'm speaking of non-foils, of course, because foil mythics, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty much, that's, the probability is very, very low, the probability is on the par, it's a foil mythic, it's on par with a masterpiece, right? So if you're hoping to get a foil mythic, then the most expensive foil mythic is $40 only. Now, if you're hoping to get a non-foil mythic, the most expensive non-foil mythic, I believe, is $20. It's the Planeswalkers. The rest of it is kind of a hodgepodge of semi-valuable cards. It's interesting. Um, it's an interesting set. And maybe I go to one pre-release. I know a lot of you in the comment sections below have complained that I don't need to go buy boxes. I can go to one pre-release. That's just not how I do stuff, right? If I go to one, I'm going to go to the next one. And I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one because that's how I've always done pre-release. And it would be kind of strange for me not to do it. Also, I will have a video. I'm purchasing something very expensive, um, kind of related to the game store. I will have an update on that. I have... I am looking for an investor in this game store with me um, to split it either four ways or two ways or three ways. So two ways, it's possible. Three ways, I think I feel very confident I can do three ways and definitely four ways. I feel very confident that I can do it. But my friend who owns a game store, video game store, and they sell magic cards, and I need someone to get take the board games and the Warhammer. So I want to take all the TCGs and I want to take all the supplies. That's the things I want. So in case you don't know, I'm looking to buy $35,000 of inventory. The store is very obvious whose store it is at this time. So it, the reputation of this particular store, it is. it makes sense why they are selling it because there's not, I probably shouldn't say this on the video, but I'll just be honest, they're not a profitable store in my opinion. And I don't see how they can be profitable. They hoard and they have lots of old inventory that's not valuable. The thirty-five thousand they're asking for, we're not. I'm not going to pay it. Um, I'm hoping to get them down to. Originally, I said twenty-seven five, but I looked over the stock with my friend. He's saying twenty-five is the most. So if I split that two ways, that's twelve five. And if I split it four ways, which I feel like if I could get three other people to buy the stuff. Right, with me, then I feel really good about it. I feel very confident because I would get the Weiss, I would get the Pokemon, I would get the Magic, and everyone else would get the Warhammers, which a lot of it's Warhammers, a lot of it is board games. I would say the majority of the values in the board games, which previously I had interest in, but I mean, what are you going to do with like 2,000 board games? Like, I'm just not, I need to find someone interested in buying board games. If that is you, let me know, if, especially if you have to be in Houston, because ideally, all the part, all the people interested would go in. They would, we would give them a check. We will, actually, I'm buying a huge anime collection. I'm not going to tell you until it's secure, but we're talking about four figures of anime and an additional figure, a Weiss. I love Weiss. Like out of R W B Y C is definitely my favorite. And C is the most expensive of the figures. I think Blake would be my second. Blake's 200. I think Yang is 250. Ruby is like 100. But Weiss is 300. And I'm getting her for a good price. I'm getting a four figure anime collection, which I will show you as soon as I secure it. I'm just kind of in a spendy mood because a lot of when I'm like stressed out, I just want to buy stuff. And I've been stressed out a lot recently, not due to come, coming is great. If also you want a job, if you want a job that pays you a minimal of 14, 15 hour, and you can work as many hours as you want, and you're a photographer or you're a cosplayer, 
or you have interest in digital marketing, yeah, I mean, let me know because that's kind of why I'm paying its entry level. 1450 comes out to be around 30,000 a year. So 1450, I think is double. I don't know how I came up to that price. I think it used to be double minimal wage, but I don't know if it still is in Texas at least. I don't know, I have to look into it. But uh, it's really fun, everyone's young, everyone's happy, everyone's upbeat. I'm probably the saddest of the bunch, I don't, because I don't know. It's a lot of stuff has happened. Um, my air conditioning went bad and that's $8,000 for one unit. So if you can fix air conditionings, <laughs> I would be interested in that too. So instead of just drowning, you know, if I'm going to spend money, the way I am is if I spend money, I just spend money, right? And there's no like stopping it. It's just like, okay, it's time to spend money. Because like to me, air conditioning is such a BS expense, right? And it's at least 8,000, if not 16,000. So at least I deserve to spend four figures on an anime collection. Because at least I can look at that. And to me, that's more value than air conditioning. The air conditioning downstairs is fine. And that's where I work. The employees work upstairs. So obviously they're not pleased with me that they don't have air conditioning and you know, that's not the best for them, I'm sure. Anyway, that's it. Bye guys.